One, two, three, and... Yeah, Lots of fun, how you doing? Yeah, great. Listen, I'm here today with Justin Sandico and uh, just sort of jabbing away here, you see, and it's great. Justin, it's a joy to be here, a joy to actually hear you play and um, listen to this beautiful mid to late 60s Telecaster. Yeah, I. All original. I bet it's your pride and joy, this guitar, isn't it? It's my fa Yeah, it's my favourite at yeah, the moment. Yeah. I, I do like Telecasters. There's something of, to me, a Telecaster is, always, is, is virtually an acoustic player's electric. To me, I don't know what it is. It's a blank canvas, you know, yeah. it just, just does pretty it. pretty versatile, I, I think, think it's so. my favourite thing about them. I they just can go them. real sharp and bright and country, or real round and jazzy, depending well, on what mood listen, you're in. You, know. you could do anything with it. Would it work for Jimmy Page with Zeppelin, with all that all that stuff, you know? Absolutely. You know, yeah. very powerful tool, and of course, um, that is a very sweet sound one. They are. Um, I want to have a chat with you about, how, you know, when did you first start playing the guitar? What age were you? I was... Uh, apparently six when I started, but I don't really know. I don't. I played before I can remember, so my earliest memories are all guitar related. Mm. Uh, but uh, like yourself, I started with a uke, a plastic <laughs> <Really>? uke. <Yeah. laughs> you didn't tell me that yeah, earlier. No, no. How cool is uh, that? So uh, yeah, I started with a plastic uke, and then my grandmother bought me a classical guitar uh, when I was about eight or nine, and then uh, I was practicing a lot. So eventually, my my dad did a deal with me where if he'd kind of double whatever money I could save for an electric guitar. So uh, I did a paper round and stuff and saved up my pennies and uh, did a few guitar lessons to local kids in my street and uh, eventually got a Aria Pro 2 Stagecaster electric guitar, Strat Copy, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a terrible Gorilla amplifier and uh, started a little band. And, and we, by the time I was 12, we were kind of gigging in all of the working man's clubs, kind of RSL clubs in Australia, uh, retired soldiers leagues kind of. Uh, things playing, you know, ACDC and Chuck Berry and, and that sort of thing. Fantastic. Yeah. What w would you say was your first major guitar influence? Because we've all got them. You sort of kind of a seminal period in your life. You think, oh, yeah, that's when I heard that guy, that's what changed it. It was probably the Stones, Keith and Keith really? and Brian and, and, and that, because my, that was the music I was first attracted to, I guess, was kind of Chuck Berry sort of style. But pretty quickly, my mum introduced me to the old gold double album Stones thing and uh, that was the one where I really first started trying to work out that stuff you know I remember saying to my dad that uh, oh can I have some guitar lessons because I want to learn how to play those songs and he said well you've got the record just listen to it a lot and figure it out and my dad's not a musician but he nailed it how you know that's the way to learn the stuff and I'm kind of glad he did that so I've still got that record all scratched to uh, to pieces with dropping the needle in and off yeah. on and off. So you did that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, d I did that. I think the great way of uh, learning that that way is it develops your ear because a lot of the time you're going to get it wrong. Yeah, the absolutely. Number, the number of times, the first time I really did that was with uh, Bert Jansch and Bert's very first album. And I still have that first album. Yeah. And you know, dropping the needle and slowing it down to, to, the, to the slower speed. I think, right, I've nailed it. And you work it out. Then I went to see him. And he's playing in all the completely wrong positions. Mm. He's playing up here, and I think I'm playing, you know. But it, but what it does, I still think it's a great way of doing it. It develops the ear. It's the best uh, way of doing it, I think. You you know. s even though yeah. we have the internet, even though we have tablature, we have all these incredible aids to help uh, guitar players get good quickly and, and and play things correctly. You still think that's still the best way? Yeah, 
Undoubtedly. Well, all, of the great, all of the great guitar players that we like all learned that way. So Jimi Hendrix definitely didn't use MX tabs to figure out <laughs> no. how to play Albert King licks. It's a, you no. know, the best way to, and music's a language, and if you're gonna learn a language, you wanna do it by speaking the language. You know, there's no good trying to learn French from a book. The best way to learn to speak French is to go to France, you know, full, undoubtedly. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think musically it's the same thing. I'm really right? surprised to hear this, Rob, honestly, because you're of that uh, younger generation to me. Everybody's younger than me, of course. Uh, to, to, you know, it, it's it's great to hear that, that you know that it's almost like a primeval way of learning, but you mm. know, slowing it down. Did you find that doing it that way, you were discovering other things as well as you're working out what they were doing? You think, well, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how. Yeah, yeah. You find your own things accidentally in amongst yeah. it, where you tried to play it that lick and then it didn't work out. You played it your own way and it becomes part yes. of your thing, yeah. almost certainly. But I think the biggest thing that transcribing gives you is the ability to find a note that you hear in your head quickly so if you when you're working on a record and you you hear that note and then you spend ages trying to find that note on the instrument mm -hmm. eventually it becomes a pretty fluid thing so most times I can hear a track and transcribe it yeah. more or less right away and so if I find a sound in my head I know how to make that sound on here so uh, if we're having a little jam before as you're playing I'm trying to hear what's going on and if I find a little melody I can let it come out without having mm. to think of I know all of the scales but it's a it, I think music's not about that music's about that so it's still intuitive with you it's still it intuitive. has to, I think it has yeah. to be otherwise it stinks you know absolutely like that's, you know. yeah you're not just playing cold you're not playing clinical clinically yeah. exactly the way the guy did it let's move on a few years so you started out being influenced by the stones later on in life was there another seminal influence with the with the uh, let's say the electric guitar yeah, I mean, I went through a funny period of after learning guitar and studying Stones and that kind of era stuff, I got into punk. And at that point, I rebelled against all musical learning and played in punk bands and had a mohawk and lots of earrings and basically acted like a bit of an idiot, I think, in it's hindsight. Hard to, it's hard but, to but believe, isn't it? It's, uh, it's hard to you believe know, you had a mohawk. Uh, yeah, yeah, big blue one. Fantastic. Foot long. Wow. Was proper, yeah. There's some yeah. funny photos around. Uh, so I, I had a period of doing that and then... Uh, when I finished college, my dad wanted me to go to university, and I'm, I wasn't really. I'd, I was toying up between art school and, and music school, and I'm really glad in hindsight that I chose music. And uh, but to get in there, then I had to suddenly study, and I went to see the head of music uh, and said, "Look, I want to learn guitar there." And he said, "Well, you can play, but you can't read. So if you can learn to read in two months, then I'll let you into the school because I didn't have the other qualifications that I should have had." And uh, he gave me this the, the Berkeley series books of, of reading music and uh, and some saw studies, some classical saw studies, and uh, I set about learning to read music, and I learned to read music in two months, and That's they let me into the incredible. school. And uh, That's a great motivation. Yeah. So you, you, you hadn't read the dots prior to that no, at not all? not at all. So no, I didn't know any music theory whatsoever at that point, and I had a really great teacher, a guy called John McMillan, uh, who, as well as teaching me the classical stuff I had to do to pass uh, at, at college, uh, or uni rather, uh, he taught me about jazz and harmony and introduced me to Miles Davis and, and, and Coltrane and, and all of the other people that are kind of important musically. So as well as doing, officially doing classical music, really I was absorbed in jazz and I got introduced to Joe Pass and, and Jim Hall and all of those guys that are my favorite guys now. Was So that was the next period where I really started learning was Probably Joe Pass, I'd say, discovering Joe Pass and jazz and going, wow, there's this, all this other stuff that I didn't yeah. know about before. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible, yeah. Yeah. So that really was a pretty seminal period in your life, actually learning yeah. to read music, being motivated. So I've got to learn to read the dots. You must have learned f a quite a lot of theory within the space of two months to, to actually be admitted into the college. But what I didn't really know much of the theory. I could, but I, I'd been gigging twice a week at least since I was 12 until mm. 18 or whatever. So I could kind of play, you know, yeah. I had a decent repertoire and I was even doing like jazz gigs and stuff, not knowing what I was doing at all, mm. just sitting on the edge of the piano player's seat and just trying to blast along. Well, that's what I jazz is all about. Oh, exactly. 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 I remember Martin yeah. Taylor saying to me, he said, remember Gordon, jazz means never having to say you're sorry. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there are no mistakes in yeah, jazz, I only possibilities. Yeah, yeah. I love I, that. I think I was apologizing. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that, that yeah, that period was important for me, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And that's led on to really what you're all about today, absorbing all these incredible influences. Yeah. Your influence is a lot broader than mine, I've got to tell you. You know, I've never studied uh, that 
many guitar players. I mean, I, in the early days, I studied the music of Bert Jansch because his music changed my life. Mm. And very quickly, I realised, for my own sake, that if I, as a creative person, I needed to do my own thing. So I would absorb those influences. Do you find that's the same thing today? You, you know, with your own music, because I know you're a writer. You write, you write songs. Mm. You write instrumentals. You're a creative guy. So you're still drawing subconsciously from all those influences. Yeah, it, it, I have to be careful with what I listen to because it influences greatly what I'm writing. So uh, at the moment we're doing uh, this a, a little trio thing that we've just started, which is improvised, completely improvised music. So we don't know what we're going to start. We hit record and we yeah. go. Yeah. With maybe me and the bass player will pick a key at the beginning. Uh, so I'm trying to listen to a lot more of that kind of improvised -y, uh, sort of music at the moment because yeah. I know it reflects straight away in what, yeah. I'm, what I'm on. Um, so yeah, now, at the, very shortly we're about to start writing for another songs vocal record that I'm doing recording in December. So I'm starting to listen again to lyric-based music, Elliot Smith and James Taylor and, and The Shins and other s stuff like that because I know that's what's gonna, well, that's what I'm going to have to do next. If you're going to write that kind of stuff, be influenced by the best. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Just, it's been a pleasure chatting with you today, Gov. Thank and you so I've much got for coming down. It's been you're a doing great, great work. It's been a mean, great time. You've influenced thousands and thousands of guitar players it's with kind the of website. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's wonderful, and you, at least you had the vision to say that's what I want to do. And of course, it, you know all the periphery stuff that comes I'd, from that. I'd, I'd like to say that that was how it was, but it was m much more serendipitous than that. It was let's do this thing. That YouTube thing looks kind of cool. Wow, a thousand people watched it. Let's yeah. make another one. It was yeah. more. It was less planned well, that's, than I thought. That, you know. That's honest. And, and thank you for your plectrum. No, you're this very is, welcome. It's a Justin Sandico <laughs> plectrum. This is, I will be able to play really like this man now. Know what absolutely. It's all just about the pick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to practice or anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, bless you, Gov. It's <laughs> been great. Hope to see you again. Let's yeah. have another jam at some point. Absolutely. For Enjoyed sure. Enjoyed it. Cheers. Thank you.